Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the day three of our free week in software quality assurance testing. Let's continue our uh, learning process, this uh, exciting journey throughout the week. Grab a notebook and be ready to learn because we're going to learn something very interesting today. Yesterday, we talked about bugs and uh, bug life cycle and uh, also how important it is to involve the testing team earlier in the software development process, how important it is to prevent the defects earlier rather than detect them later on. And we also saw some examples of how uh, bugs that are found by the end users, bugs that are leaked basically, uh, could cost the company millions of dollars and also uh, damage uh, of reputation and also uh, legal issues, right? And that's the reason why there's a high demand uh, for quality assurance testers in the market, especially in fintech industry. With that being said, today we're going to move on to another interesting topic which is sql we'll learn what sql stands for how to use sql how to write sql um, so um, let's move on first thing that i want to share is the demand in in job market for the sql uh, language so here's one example, junior manual tester position. So pay attention, it's a junior position. So even if it's a junior position, they are requesting SQL experience. And as you can see, we're highlighting here, strong experience in SQL queries. So that shows that SQL is an important part, crucial knowledge that any software tester should have, should possess before going out to job market. Uh, because pretty much uh, in, on a daily basis, uh, you will be given tasks where, which involves the backend testing, which involves uh, testing the data. Pretty much we'll talk about data and databases uh, in a minute. So here's another example, which is a, a position of ETL tester. So ETL tester position uh, is uh, highly in demand currently in the market. It has been in demand, but uh, especially with, uh, you know, with uh, in recent years, I would say, uh, it is more and more um, uh, getting more popular uh, among uh, in testing industry. And ETL is is just taking the SQL to, to another level. So you're not just a manual tester, but you are uh, a professional who can validate how the data is moving and how the data is being transformed along the way and uh, and being and getting loaded into uh, <clears throat> into the target uh, uh, repository or databases. And that uh, it's a highly paid position, by the way, uh, so a much better paid uh, in comparison to the manual tester. And you also have a, a better opportunity of career growth and and also better chance of keeping your job uh, eventually. Or even if you lose your job, then you know you have a better chance of getting another job uh, if if you specialize in ETL testing. Um, but these days, by the way, ETL testing in combination with an automation knowledge is even uh, higher in, in demand. Uh, so that's something that we, we cover as part of the bootcamp as well. All right, so now that we know that the SQL is highly in demand, let's move on to, uh, to explore what SQL is. But before that, uh, we need to understand the software architecture. So software has layers. Software has layers. On a daily basis, as an end user, you're always interacting with the presentation layer. So you are given the presentation layer. When, whenever you open Facebook application or Instagram and TikTok, 
or the Telegram or this particular Zoom application, um, we are dealing with, we are interacting with the presentation layer. That's mostly uses uh, HTML, CSS, and you'll, you'll learn about that as well, um, and, and some JavaScript. But what's behind that presentation layer is the application layer. Application layer is where the main core logic of the function uh, of the application lies, and uh, and that core functionality is usually written in programming languages such as C sharp or or, or Python or uh, it could be any other uh, you know object oriented programming language. Um, so now, what is behind the application layer is the data layer, right? The data layer. Now, this data layer is what we're going to talk about today. So what is data? Data is any information, any type of information that you interact with, that you provide to the application, pretty much. Also, that you receive back from the, from the application. That's the data. When you're registering to any social network uh, platform, you are giving out so much information, your date of birth, sometimes your email, uh, and uh, any from your, your pictures, your videos, and all that information is getting stored somewhere, right? So it's definitely not on the browser. Uh, so it's going and uh, traveling from your computer all the way to the cloud and uh, to the data layer and it's being stored in in databases pretty much okay so let's move on so how do you store data so where does the data get stored the data is kept in tables and it is very simple and uh, similar to Microsoft Excel spreadsheet actually, right? If, if you've used Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets, I'm sure you, you know most of you have uh, done or have used this, these applications at some point in life. So this should look very similar. It has rows and it has columns and the columns have names. So as you can see, we have column one, employee ID, and then Column two, first name, last name, email. So you can visualize now pretty much how the data that you're providing to the applications are being stored. So if, if the data is stored in the tables, where are those tables, right? Where do you keep the tables? So tables are kept in databases. So tables are kept in databases. And usually this uh, particular shape is used to, um, to represent the database. And, and you can see that within one database, you can have uh, you know, numerous or multiple uh, tables. Apart from tables, there are many other objects in, in the database, but something that we're not uh, covering today, but we're, we're going to focus on just the tables today within the databases. All right, so now that we know that the data is kept in the tables and then the tables are kept in the databases, so how can we actually interact with the databases so that we can, we can retrieve data, we can save data, we can update data, right? Um, so how do you interact with the databases? So you can see this uh, interesting. Uh, illustration here, the person is trying to communicate with the database and the answer is that please speak to me in SQL uh, or sometimes referred to as a SQL. So you need to speak or write SQL to communicate with the database. And SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And it is English-like language, right? Well, the, the reason why we say English-like, the, the syntax is pretty much as if you're writing in English, but of course, you know, you just have to uh, get used to specific syntax 
just like you know when you put together an english sentence you need to have you need to follow certain grammatical uh guidelines right if you're speaking french or or, or german in you know in you have certain guidelines so just like that when you're writing in sql there are specific guidelines and um and rules that you have to follow and but it is in it is sound it sounds like english uh, pretty much basically and it's called query language because you're pretty much asking for information right you're querying right you're requesting for information <clears throat> and then the database uh, will respond uh, with with information back to you pretty much so <clears throat> important part of learning any language think of a foreign language um like spanish for example so you want to learn spanish you need to practice speaking spanish pretty much right so uh if you want to learn sql language or we'll talk about python tomorrow as well <clears throat> you need to be ready to practice you need to be ready to make mistakes and this is the uh, probably the most efficient way of learning uh, any language. So let's go ahead and learn some basic syntax, basic sentences in SQL. We'll learn how to get data. We'll learn how to filter data information uh, from the database, uh, basically, and how to order uh, the results that we're receiving um, and so on. So this would be the first step, and then we're going to move on some, to some complicated uh, or complex uh, information as well, but that's, that's going to be the next step. So the first keyword that we are going to learn today is select, right? If uh, we have in the audience uh, those who, are, who have been learning SQL, so that's very much fam familiar uh, to you. So the select is is a keyword that's used to retrieve the records from the table in a database so that's something that we're going to go ahead and do so first I'm, i'll show you in in an online platform and then it will show you in an actual tool as well so as you can see here this is this is a table right this table here uh it consists of columns and rows and you can see that it's it's about customers so there's a customer id customer name uh, and so on if we want to select all the records if we want to select all the columns and all the records from this table uh, the syntax here is select and then star right the easy way to uh, address this symbol is a star so star from and you give the table name and the table name is listed right here on the right hand side as you can see it says your database and then table name so we have customers table so when you run the query you will basically get all the records so we could do the same thing for the employees table just to see that it is actually working here we go so in the employees table there are 10 records so we just returned the 10 records so you can see the number of records here okay so let's try it for the orders table and as you can see we select all the information from the orders table let's go back to customers table and then select only the country column so I just want to see the country column. So instead of mentioning star, or instead of, instead of just putting uh, this particular symbol, which actually means give me all the columns, we just want to see the country column. So select country from customers. Run the query, and as you can see, now only the customer, only the country column from the customers table is displayed right and as i mentioned it is an english like query language so you're selecting in column name don't forget the keyword from and then the table name so pretty much select column name from 
table name. And if you want to select several columns, let's say we want to select the customer name and then the country, we could do that as well, but just make sure you put the commas in between, right? So we wanna include, we wanna take customer name. I also wanna take the city and the country and then run. The SQL, as you can see, we have all the information that uh, that we need. Uh, pretty much the specifically the information that we were requesting, right? So we just learned how to write our first SQL query. Very very basic SQL query, and in fact, as a QA tester, as a software quality assurance tester. Most of the queries that you are running are select statements. So we refer to those, uh, uh, to this line of uh, code as a statement. So most of the time, QA testers are running or creating and executing select statements. It gets a bit more complex as you, as you learn more, as you dive into more, especially if you are an ETL tester. Uh, the professional who is who's validating the data is moving from one place to another place and also being being uh, transformed along the way uh, that is going to require a bit more um, <clears throat> effort to learn the language better and then to create complex queries that's something that you're going to learn eventually uh, uh, but you know um, it comes with practice so today Obviously, you know, we're going to focus on uh, the basics. So we learn how to select the data from a table. We also learn how to select all the data, right? All the columns, which was just using the star. Or you can select by specific columns. But make sure you, you mention, uh, you, you include the comma there, right? So that's that's the... Uh, important uh, piece of information there. So let's go back. So we learn how to select or basically get the data uh, from, from the database or from the database table. Now, what if I want to retrieve only the unique records? I want to get only the unique records from a column. So if we go back here, to our customers table, as you can see, we have customers from Germany, Mexico, and, and, and so on. So there are several countries, but I want to see the distinct or unique list of countries. So, you know, to, from which countries we have, we have customers. So that, that's very important business information. So if I just say uh, country, select country from customers, it's still returning all the records you see and it's there and i still have repeating information here germany and i and i have germany one more time and again it repeats but i want but i all, but i only want to see the unique list of countries and and the way to do it uh, to do this or to achieve this is to by using the distinct keyword so instead of saying select you say select distinct pretty much, right? Straightforward, easy. So we simply say, select distinct. Pay attention to the number of records. Currently I have 91 records. This is the total number of records in this particular table. You can check it here as well. It says customers and there are 91 records on the right-hand side. So, but when we select distinctly, that number changed to 21 number changed to 21. So now we have distinct list of countries here. So they're definitely not repeating. So apparently uh, we have customers from 21 countries. Important uh, piece of information for the business. Um, but to get this kind of information, as you can see, uh, you need to use specific syntax, specific keyword. Uh, and that is something that you just learned, uh, which is select distinct, select distinct. Now, <clears throat> I wanna run uh, a comparison 
with the Microsoft Excel here as well, because because as I said, most of you have uh, experience with micro Microsoft Excel, I'm pretty sure. So and that's going to be helpful uh, comparison. So let's go here. This is Microsoft Excel we're looking at, and the same customer table I just copied and pasted into Excel. And as you can see, we have this country column right here, right? And it's repeating, obviously. And I, I could copy this particular uh, customer column and, and then paste it in a new, new sheet. Let's just paste it in a new sheet right here. And what we're gonna do is that there's a formatting option here, which shows that you could format it for the duplicate values. So if we format for the duplicate values, it's going to show you all the duplicate values. And then it's, it's gonna highlight the duplicate values, right? Pretty much. And we can see that, yeah, we have a bunch of duplicate values, but I just wanna get the distinct. So, and that is also possible in Microsoft Excel. We'll just go to the data tab and there should be an option to remove the duplicates. You see that it says remove duplicates. When I click on it, just make sure that you check this mark. It says my data has headers because the first header, the country uh, is, is a header pretty much. And we will go ahead and click Okay, here we go. Let's read the message here. 70 duplicate values found and removed. 21 unique values remain. Okay, so let's select. Yes, indeed, we have 21 records left. 21 unique uh, country list <clears throat> as left. That's a pretty much the same thing, right? That we could achieve, but we were doing this using the SQL query. All right. I think that was clear. So let's go back. The next important keyword that we're going to learn is the order. Ordering, right? So um, now think of it that way. Whenever you're purchasing an item from Amazon, there is an option to order the results by price, correct? Maximum to minimum, minimum to maximum. And you could also order by the number of stars it has, the, you know, the reviews, the rating, uh, and so on, right? So this ordering option is, uh, is pretty much everywhere in any application that you, you have used in, uh, on a daily basis. And, and this is achieved, this can be achieved by uh, using the SQL uh, as well. So let's go ahead and try this. As you can see, this particular result right now, it's not ordered. So I have Germany at the beginning and I have, you know, France. So I want to order this by um, pretty much alphabetically. So we're going to go ahead and say order by country. And that should be fine. We'll go ahead and run the query. Pretty easy, right? Order by, and you just give the com column name. And it orders the data in an alphabetical order. An alphabetical order. So this is the keyword that you're using. So there's, there's, you know, there's a question that comes to your mind automatically. What if I want to order it in a, in a different order, in a reversed order? So in that case, you will have to use this additional keyword that says descending, that stands for descending. So by default, it always orders in ascending order, in ascending order. So we alphabetically starting from A to all the way to the end of the alphabet. But if you want to start, uh, if basically you want to reverse the order, then you're going to have to use this particular keyword, descending. Now, as you can see, it is in a descending order, right? And you could achieve the same thing, pretty much, same thing in, in Microsoft Excel as well. So if we go ahead and run 
in ascending order. One thing that we need to make sure is that we go ahead and select only the data that we want to order. <clears throat> and as you can see, it ordered from Argentina all the way to Venezuela. And, and we have Z2A, same thing, right? So it is that simple, basically. The ordering the data in, uh, in database tables using SQL is very simple. So you're using the keyword order by. Next, <clears throat> what if we want to filter? What if I want to look at all the customers that are only from Germany? All the customers that are only from Germany, right? So that can be done. And, and the keyword to filter is where? Keyword to filter is where? So we'll go ahead and then let's just select all the, all the records once again, all the columns and all the records. But now I want to look only at the records or the customers which came from the country Germany. So we're going to say where country equals this particular country, right? Where country equals Germany. So let's pay attention. Number of records is 91. But when I run the SQL, it is down to 11 because we're not looking at all the records, but we're looking at only the customers that are from Germany, right? So once again, the syntax is very simple. You still have the same select statement that you learned earlier. Select all the columns. That's what star means. Select all the columns from customer table where country column is equal to Germany. Okay, very simple. We could do the same thing uh, if we have Argentina. Hopefully I spelled it correctly. Here we go. We have three customers from Argentina. Let's go back to Microsoft Excel, but this time to the actual data that we have, right? And how can we achieve this? Who can tell me how can I perform the same task in Microsoft Excel? So I want to filter basically. I want to I want to see only the records where the uh, customers are from Germany or Argentina. Hmm? Any any suggestions? Filter just one column. Filter. That's right. So we're using the filter that is correct. Let me check if we have by country column filtering by column exactly right. So so this kind of comparison between Microsoft Excel. And the SQL actually helps you to visualize the data. So the key in creation of the SQL queries is how you can visualize it in your mind. So at the beginning, it's of course, you know, it's it is very simple, it is very straightforward, but it gets more complex as you write more uh, advanced queries. And this is when uh, the visualization kicks in this is when you, know, you need to be able to imagine how the data is structured and how you want to uh, structure the result set right so let's go ahead and use the filter and as you can see there are uh, filter options here we're just going to go ahead and uh, look for Germany and then say okay here we go it returned our 11 records from Germany we could do the same thing for now Argentina and those three records from Argentina, right? The same functionality, same feature that we have, but that's this is something that's being covered um, uh, or can be handled by using the SQL query as well, right? So let's go back. Let's go back to our next important 
uh, keyword, which is like. So what is like? So this is a pattern searching. So what if we want to uh, search for a country name which starts with G or which ends with Y or contains the letter A and, and so on, right? So if when you don't know the whole uh, uh, complete spelling uh, of, mm, of our uh, of the keyword but then you you know the part you know part of it so this is when you can you can certainly use uh like and this, this is also very interesting um very interesting uh keyword now what i just did here was two dashes this is a way to comment the code right so when you when you comment it out that means the interpreter or or the uh, or the platform or the SQL will actually ignore it, right? As you can see, when I run the query, it's still returning ninety one records because it's ignoring. It is essentially ignoring the second line. But if I take away those two dashes, it will apply and it will start reading the second line as well. So let's just ignore or comment this out uh, for now, but then. What we want to do is we're going to look for the country names. Let's look for country names, distinct country. So we have list of distinct country. Let me remove this. And where country, and we're gonna say like, and it starts with the letter S, right? The letter S, it starts with the letter S, but it can end with any ending, with, with any uh, collection of letters, pretty much. So in the syntax for this is you, you're using the percentage sign. You're using the percentage sign. And that percentage sign is like a placeholder, is like a replacement for the all the other characters that that might follow the letter s okay as you can see we the result is uh we have sweden spain and switzerland because all those uh country names are starting with the letter s with the letter s right and and you could you could do all that combination here as well you could you could say um you know it, it doesn't necessarily start but it can be somewhere in the middle and then now we have the Austria and USA as well, because they don't start with the letter S, but they have the letter S somewhere uh, in between, right? Uh, hopefully it makes sense. So let's go back to our Excel sheet and then try to perform the same or similar uh, action here. So we have this a distinct list of countries and we'll apply a filter here and and there's a text filter, see that? You can say begins with the letter S. And you have the Switzerland, Sweden, and Spain. But let's clear this filter, go back, and then contains the letter S. So if we say only contains, then you will have uh, two additional countries added that, as uh, USA and, and, and Austria here as well. So this is what uh, pattern searching uh, is about in, in SQL. Let's go back. Now, you could also use operators such as greater than or less than, greater than or equal, uh, less than or equal. So um, again, let's go back to the example of Amazon. And if you're searching for a product and you could actually set a, a limit uh, saying uh, products which are which cost less than hundred dollars right or uh, less than twenty five dollars or if you are searching for for a home on uh, on any uh, you know zillow.com for example or trulia.com that's where you could set a limit saying I'm searching for for uh, you know one 
family home, which costs less than six hundred thousand dollars. Let let's say, right? So you 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 can set those kind of limits on um, uh, on on your query. So just like that, we we can do it in uh, in SQL as well. Okay, so let's try to do this kind of um, similar approach here. And the good example would be the the orders or the products. So so we can look at the products. As you can see, the products has has a price. So we can say uh, select start from products where price is more uh, or actually let's do less than if we have anything less than uh, $10 and you would get you would get all the results all the products where the price is less than $10 as you can see but um, what if we go ahead and say less than less than one second less than nine dollars we received six records but if we go ahead and say less than or equal to nine dollars now we have some additional one additional record as you can see nine is also included in the result set right because we're saying less than or equal to right less than or equal so, so this uh, uh, this particular uh, operators, you know, greater than or less than uh, this or not equal, uh, all of that can be used in the in the where clause. And there are additional uh, operators such as in and between. That's something that uh, we're going to cover as well. But let's let's look at them in the actual. Uh, tool which is used to uh, to to manage the databases to manage the data uh, which is called as a SQL server management studio so so let me launch this application as you can see this tool the tool that you're looking at is a SQL server management studio and you will have this tool installed in your computer let's look at the left hand side here it says databases right and within the databases, this is a pretty much the folder. You have the list of databases here, right? So this is just a folder or a container for a list of databases. And we're looking for a database called HR for human resources. And within the HR database, you see the tables here. So if I open up this particular folder, you will see the list of tables here i have the countries table i have employees table and so within the hr database right now we're querying the employees table so we're looking into all the records from the employees table and to do that as you can see the same syntax that we used before and and one thing to note is that the SQL is case insensitive. So I could pretty much use select with the uppercase or select with lowercase as well. I mean, it's, it's recommended to have uh, the keywords in, a, in an uppercase. It looks more readable and it stands out uh, from the table name and then and the column name and, and so on, but not required. Basically, it doesn't throw any errors or any issues uh, if you use it directly. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and apply some of those uh, some of those additional uh, keywords that we have learned. So we can go ahead and use those, you know, more than or equal or less than or equal or not equal here. So we'll say where salary is less than let's just we just we could just go ahead and pick any seller here less than seven thousand dollars and as you can see we select all the records where the seller is less than 
seven thousand dollars okay so and we could do the same thing but now we're uh, flipping it more than or equal and 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 you're getting all that information here what if we want to select a particular employee here right particular employee with the employee id equals to 100 so you we would get only that particular employee right what if we want to say all the employees but not that employee which is not equal to right this is when we're using not equal and this particular uh, sign here stands for not equal and it would get you all the records except for that particular record there's another way of doing it you could you could do it that way as well okay so this, this is another uh approach to to use not equal to so pretty much so let's go back in and between in and between so in is um that's another interesting uh keyword um and the and the best example for this one would be if we were to go back to to the SQL editor where we were using to the customers table, for example, from the customers table, we want to select the customers where the country is Germany, but I also want to look at the customers from Germany and Argentina at the same time, right? So, and the way to do this would be where country in, and you would go ahead and say Germany, and then in the list, you will say Argentina as well, okay? So where, the, where country is in Germany and Argentina. So this way, now it includes and in Germany and Argentina customers. Uh, so I really didn't have to write two different queries. Uh, so you can actually combine it into one. This is where the uh, in operator can be used. All right, so let's go back and uh, see how we can use the between. How we can use the between. And right here, so between is pretty much similar to the operator such as greater than or less than um but it is um it is it is faster um or more efficient pretty much so we what we want to do is we want to select the employees where the salary is let's say between nine thousand and seventeen thousand. so that's something that we could do so we're salary between, and we're going to put 9,000 and 17,000, okay? Just remember one thing, between is inclusive. So it includes the 9,000 and the 17,000 as well. It's pretty much as saying where salary is greater than or equal to 9,000 and less than or equal to 17,000. That's, that's a shortcut uh, to those operators, basically. That's what the purpose of uh, between is, pretty much. All right, let's go ahead and look at the uh, some additional operators such as and and or, and and or. So this is uh, and and or are when in the where clause, you want to include uh, several uh, several filters at the same time, right? So going back to the same example of Amazon, let's say you, you're, you're saying, uh, I'm looking for a, um, a product, a product which is uh, less than $25, but at the same time, has five stars right so you have two different filters that you're applying at the same time right two different filters that you're applying at the same time so you could you could do the same thing in uh, microsoft excel as well right so you're 
you were saying, uh, you know, customers from uh, only from Argentina, but also the address has to start uh, with the letter C, you know, begins with the letter C. So now you just apply two different filters here, right? You apply two different filters. So just like that, you could you could apply two different filters uh, in uh, in the using a SQL query as well. So let's say we we are looking for um, employees where the where the salary is more than. 10,000 and right, this is where you're adding another filter. We're saying, and the department ID, let's say department ID is eight, or you could do department ID in pretty much, let's just keep it eight, right? Department ID is eight. Keep it simple, but then you can see that we're adding two different uh, filters here. If you execute, now you have the employees where where the salary is more than ten thousand, but you're also applying a filter where the department ID is specifically eight. Okay, so and you could do uh, you could do the or operator as well. The difference between or operator is, is a bit logical, right? So you need to understand the difference between and and or. So or, if we go back to this example right here, pretty much same as saying country is equal to Germany or country is equal to Argentina. And you could keep keep adding. So this this would this would return. Uh, oh, we have an error right here. We, we, this would return the same result pretty much. So we're saying we are we want to look at the customers, which are either from Germany or from Argentina. Okay, this is this is how the OR operator pretty much works. All right, so this was the basics or the basic introduction to how to write SQL uh, queries. So you learn how to write select statements. You learn how to select the values distinctly in the examples of uh, how we selected countries distinctly. You also learn how to order, right? How to order the results by you know, in ascending order or descending order. You also learn how to apply certain filters using the where clause. And we also learn to use a like operator to, to look for uh, specific patterns. And there are other operators such as uh, mathematical operators, such as, you know, greater than or less than, uh, and then in between, uh, those are useful uh, operators and a logical operator such as and and an and, and or. Now with that information, let's move on to uh, a bit more complex uh, the queries uh, or interview questions that, um, that you would mostly get. And if we have, um, if we have uh, in the audience, uh, anyone who's been in the market, uh, you probably have seen such uh, code challenges or questions, sometimes verbally, sometimes in a written form uh, in SQL, basically. How to find duplicate records? So interviewers like to ask this question. And this, I, I wouldn't say it's complex. It's one of the basic questions uh, that comes up a lot. So the answer uh, to this question is that the first thing is you will have to group the rows using group by. Now we didn't look into this, but as I said, this is a bit uh, more uh, complicated or complex um, uh, keyword or the operator. So first you will have to group the records 
by group by. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's say we were looking for duplicate. We're looking for the countries which are which are repeating. Or actually, right in the in the employees table, we're looking for the uh, the employees which has the same name. Right. That that's an interesting example here. So let's go ahead and select all the employees first, and we'll go ahead and get the first name, and then we will count, and then group by the first name. This is what grouping by means pretty much. So we're grouping by first name, and then we're, we're checking for each first name how many employees we have with that first name. So it looks like we have two Alexanders, right? We have we have two Johns and we have two Karens, but what we have but we have one Bruce and one Charles, pretty much one Daniel. But in the the purpose of the interview question here is that whether you can get we can return the Alexander, John, and Karen here. Okay. So going back the next step is that now you need to filter the groups, which has the count of more than one. So common mistake that the uh, beginners make is that they start adding the where clause here, right? So you, we just learned that you can add, you can use the where clause to actually apply filters. But however, if you are trying to filter the result of grouping, right? Because we just grouped uh, the records here. Then instead of the where clause, you are using having clause. Okay, so having. And then we're going to say having count is more than one. And this way, we're going to return those records uh, which are duplicate. Those records which are duplicate. Okay, so again, let's take a look at the uh, statement that we wrote. We said, uh, first, give me the first name and also count how many times we have this, this, this particular first name in the table. We're grouping by first name and then return only the records, only the result of groupings, which are more than one, right? If we don't include this, it's gonna return all of it, but we're only interested in the records which has more than one, more than one uh, repetition. Basically, duplicate first names. Okay, right. Hopefully, uh, this was clear. And and uh, rewatch uh, if you're out there, uh, you know, going through the interviews because this interview question uh, comes up a lot especially if you're applying to uh, positions where SQL is required. All right, so this is the first and then second step. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. Here's another interview question. This one is also very simple. Uh, how to find the highest salary or the maximum salary or how to find the employee who is basically earning the big bucks, right? So you have two options here. Right, the first option is using the built-in function max, and that built-in function exists in, in Microsoft Excel as well. So let me just start with the Microsoft Excel, actually. So this, uh, this way, it's going to be uh, very simple. So we are in, in Microsoft Excel, and we have the same data as you were seeing in the database. As you can see, this is the salary column. This is the salary column. And right here, I'm going to write a function, built-in function in SQL called max. So, and with that, I'm just going to go ahead and select all the information, all the salaries, and it's going to return the maximum salary that this column has, which is 24,000. This is the maximum salary. Uh, and this would be the Stephen King. Right, so we could do the same thing or same approach and same result can be can be achieved. Uh, 
let's select all the records from employees first. Then let's select only the salary. And from the salary column, we just want to select the maximum salary, right? You see that even the function name is pretty much the same. Select max salary from employees. So it's a very, very uh, simple or easy way of achieving this result. Now, what if the employee, uh, you know, uh, interviewer will ask you not to use the max? Sometimes they limit your uh, abilities to use or not use a specific uh, built-in functionalities so just to see that if you know your thinking process so they could ask you not to use the max and then use other approach or if there's an other approach and it would be using the order by uh, descending right so you're basically ordering the salary in a descending order from from a maximum to minimum and then selecting the top one so select top one is another uh interesting Mm, a way of selecting uh, the the records. So let's go ahead and then select all the salary again, right? If we select all the salaries, as you can see, it's not pretty much ordered, uh, but although 24,000 is coming up first, so we can go ahead and say select by salary, but make sure, you know, order descending order so that we have the maximum first and then it goes all the way to, to the minimum. But then right here, we're gonna add top one. And that's it, and we got it. That's the same result as selecting with the max, right? Pretty much. So it's a two-step approach here. First, you're ordering by the salary in a descending order, and then you're selecting top one salary, pretty much, all right? So that's the, that is the approach how to select uh, how to find the highest uh, or maximum salary. Now, the next question becomes a bit tricky. How to find the second highest salary? Now, this is also frequently asked interview question. I'm sure this question has been asked not only uh, from the testers, but also from the developers uh, as well. Uh, finding the second highest salary. There's another way of more complex uh, uh question which is finding the nth high salary so they're going to ask you to create a, a query which will be able to find let's say third highest salary fifth or tenth highest salary and so on but we're not going to get to that uh today right so we'll just look for the second highest salary which is already a complex uh, uh query and again if you're uh the if you're a beginner and you know you're new to QA and you, you join this session, don't be overwhelmed with uh, with the last three slides that I just showed, because this was here, uh, uh, and, you know, useful information to those who are out in the market currently and looking for a job uh, and, um, and going through the interviews, basically, because we have in the audience uh, attendees who are learning QA and also going through the interviews at the same time. So uh, let's go ahead and do this exercise as well. So finding the second highest salary. First step is you go ahead and find the highest salary. That is the, that's something that you already learned, right? Select max salary from employees. Then you're gonna use a, what's called as a subquery. Right, so you're using a subquery, uh, and and then, and then selecting the maximum, which is less than than the actual maximum. So basically, you're selecting the second maximum, which is less than the original maximum, pretty much. I know it sounds a bit complex, uh, but let's go ahead and do this in um, quickly in Excel. Pretty much, what you're doing is that the the second time you're you're, you're saying, I want to select the maximum salary, which is less than the maximum salary, okay? So because you, we know what the maximum salary is, so we, we're ignoring the maximum salary and we're, sele we're selecting all the records except for the maximum salary, basically. And this way we're, we get the 18,000. And the same thing here in the, uh, in the SQL query, 
So we could we could go ahead and say, let's select at the beginning, just select all the salary first, and then select the max salary, right? So we got the max salary right here, and then we're gonna keep it down and then start writing another max salary query here, where we will say salary is less from employees table is less than we will have to put this original query within the parenthesis because as you can see this particular query is going to return 24,000 right this this particular query is going to return 24,000 and what we're saying is that uh, give me all the salary that's less that is less than the original maximum salary. And, and if we execute this, you're gonna get 18,000. But to simplify it, just to, just to see that what is really going on here, we can first select all the salary, all the salary. As you can see, it returns all the records with all the salary except for the maximum salary because we're looking for the salaries which are less than the maximum salary. And then within this range, we're selecting the max again. Okay, so that's that's a trick basically here, right? Again, um, you can rewatch uh, and and then practice. And this is this is definitely um, a useful piece of information. And uh, from from our experience, this question is asked a lot, pretty much. Uh, and, and the previous questions as well. How to find the duplicate records? That's probably asked, uh, you know, eight out of 10 times if you are going for any position which requires SQL. Uh, first, you know, high salary sometimes, but the second high salary, uh, it is asked uh, frequently as well. So that brings us to the next topic, which is, ETL. So what is ETL and why ETL is important? So ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. So this is a this is basically a process of getting the information, the data from numerous different locations. So it can be in a in a file, in an Excel file, or it can be in a other text file, what we refer to as a flat file. Uh, where there are files called uh, as a CSV files with the comma separated value files. And from all of those files, we gather the data and then load it to a more centralized data warehouse. And in that data that is gathered in a more centralized place will be used for analytical uh, or analytics uh, purposes, right? So there's specific uh, uh, job position called BI uh, uh, <clears throat> developers or business intelligence developers. Uh, or, um, and, and what they work on is that they, they generate, they work on uh, uh, creating queries and creating reports uh, based on uh, the data that's collected in, in the central uh, repository, such as data warehouse pretty much and etl testing specialization is uh highly in demand uh in the market 